Hi, I'm Henry Lopez, and you're watching Play Unplugged TV. This is Enrique Ardine for PlayUnplugged.com, and I'm here with Henry Lopez of Paradigm Concepts and the creator of Arcanus. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you taking the time to uh, interview me. Thank you very much for coming in and being interviewed. So, right off the bat, let's jump right in. Arcanus, really, new release at Origins, but not a new, not a new setting. This is this this setting's got some history. It's been around. Well, yes, uh, Arcanus has been around um, as a product since two thousand and one. Uh, we've been, uh, so I guess that makes it about 10 years old or so. When 3rd uh, Edition uh, was uh, in its heyday in uh, the D20 world, we uh, jumped on board. And it was a D20 uh, product for all those years. We ran a uh, living campaign called Living Arcanes, which was very, very successful. We released approximately uh, 120 to 125 or so uh, free adventures over a seven-year period of time. And uh, But, of course, all good things must come to an end. And when things went from uh, third to fourth, we, we felt it was um, uh, we were better off going ahead and doing our own uh, system. And, of course, that's the, uh, the big product this year, the big relaunch of the Arcanus role-playing game. And the book looks beautiful, the beautiful cover, full-color, glossy, really nice. Um, tell us a little bit about the Arcanus setting. Like when we, What's going to make us want to jump in and, and play in your world? Well, it makes Arcanus different from all the other campaign settings, or, or the majority of campaign settings, um, is the fact that, um, let's take it from the, from the basics. Uh, most uh, fantasy settings are basically a European medieval analog. We decided to, to uh, go back a little bit in time, and go back to antiquity, and we have the uh, the main main empire is called the Coriani Empire, and it's it's a uh, a knockoff of Rome. I'm a huge ancient Rome fan. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have a minor in history uh, that I specialize in ancient Rome, so I, I that's just a passion of mine. That's awesome. <laughs> so and and I think I think it's a it's a, it's a, a kick instead of being hired by the. Uh, the bartender or the mysterious stranger in the you know, in the, the corner of the uh, the inn, you're, you could be hired by senators, uh, gladiatorial uh, you know, ludus ma masters, or, or whatnot for the adventures. It's, it's it's the same trope, different dressing, obviously, but it it does give that that special uh, feel. What I I think we start to divert greatly is in the in the, the fact that Arcanus is a world of of uh, gray morality. There are no absolute whites and our absolute blacks there are there's just shades of gray and i think it's best exemplified by the gods usually uh fantasy worlds have you know the good gods and the the evil gods mm -hmm. arcanus does not arcanus has the pantheon of man and there's a uh, 13 or i'm sorry 12 gods or deities and they each have different aspects how those aspects are are recognized or worshiped depends on the churches and on the temples and we have schisms within those. So you could have the same god, or, or two priests of the same god being diametrically opposed. One of the best examples is that we have a god named Neroth, the god of death. He also has, uh, he's also the god of disease. Well, the mother church of Corion worships Neroth's aspect of the taker away or the, the, or the curing of disease. Whereas in Canceri, or which is more like a, as, about as evil as I get, uh, <laughs> as far as the, uh, going on the dark spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, they worship Nero as well, but he, there's a sect called the Plague Bringers, who feel that uh, disease is the crucible in which the best of mankind is either, uh, is, you know, close to the top. So if you're not worthy, <laughs> you're dead. And uh, they're there to make sure that mankind continues to, uh, to become the best it can be. So even the bad guys think they're doing the good thing. Oh, that's a, and not only that, but that's a that's a that's a huge amount of content with just one of the gods. That's pretty that's pretty intense. How did um now uh, there's more there's a there's actually a lot of injected his, history in there, right? Not just Rome. Oh no no, there's lots of uh, history. The, the actual history of our kingdom uh, spans over fifty sixty thousand years. We went all the all the way back. We have elder races. Uh, we have uh, the Sethergorn Empire, which are the Sethrics. Uh, if I'm a big uh, Robert E. Howard, Conan the Barbarian, call fan, so I, I, I uh, tapped into that that whole thing where we have uh, these proto uh, races that were reptilian, and uh, they were they ascended and ruled the entire continent for for millennia. And as a matter of fact, one of our our analogs for uh, the the elves are the Alori, and the Alori were created as a servitor race to the Sethergorns. That's why uh, if you look at the cover. There's a uh, female Kelikine, uh which is one of the races of the uh, the Alori, and she has tiny little fangs, 
and that's a, a vestige of being created by these uh, these reptilian-like creatures with uh, fangs. And as a person who also has a Robert E. Howard fan, that sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah. That sounds really, really cool. Um, so with the you know with the set with the setting, it sounds like there's also a lot of a lot of uh, aside from like things to fight, mm -hmm. which is very you know a traditional trope in fantasy. It sounds like there's also a lot of intrigue going on. Oh yes, uh, the, the intrigue is the uh, the key word in Arcanus. Nothing is what it appears to be. As a matter of fact, one of the jokes we have is someday I'm going to write an adventure where everything is exactly as it appears, and it's going to throw our players off completely. <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, we try to make it so that um, players actually have to think. We give them moral quandaries. We give them situations where the uh, the bad guys, quote unquote, or the 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 people who are you know doing something that the players may feel are as morally incorrect or evil, quote unquote. Um, have a have a good reason why they're doing it, and they'll actually come along and say, "Hey, listen, you know, we're doing it this way." Uh, the the last thing, I, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but because um, we do have these these adventures going on right now, you could give away a little tiny play on plug spoiler, just a just a little exclusive, little little little. Well, it's not so much exclusive; it's just a. Uh, all right, for example, there are these these blades called Serician blades, okay. and these Serician blades. Um, do more damage against uh, infernals, which is our catchphrase for devils, demons, fiends, and whatnot. Uh, they do more damage against them; it cuts through, right through their AR and whatnot. Um, but they're very to make them, to create them, is is pretty nasty. You have to. One of the ways you make them is you have a person who has been in, infected or possessed by a demon, and the blade is made and it's cooled in their still beating heart. Whoa, yeah. that is major. Yeah, not very nice. Um, but, so this crusade is going on. These Serician Blades are very, very rare. And this crusade is going on to fight these Infernals, which are the Infernal Horde, which is coming over the God Walls. So the good guys, or, or a sect of the good guys, is actually saying, wow, you know, we need to make these blades. So they rounded up these tribesmen uh, who are criminals. You know, uh, but they're not murderers, but they're thieves and whatever. And they're being condemned to this. And the players come along. Uh, and find this out. And um, the villains, you know, the quote unquote, the villains say, well, listen, if you do this, and you're part of the crusade as, as heroes, if you stop us, you're condemning your fellow warriors and fighters to death. You're going to send them out to fight a demon with a spoon, basically. Mm -hmm. So let us do this for the, for the greater good. And the players then have to make the decision do they walk away or do they fight? And honestly, we've had many, uh, many tables walk away. And we don't. The way we give experience isn't just by finding things. Mm -hmm. You 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 have to figure things out, and we give uh, uh, points for experience, uh, experience points for role playing, as much as for for the killing of, of creatures and monsters. In this quandary, uh, there's equal experience points for either way, as long as the decision is based off of uh, they they um, explain their decision to the GM of why they're doing this. If they walk away, they still get as many experience points. Had they uh, as if they would have. Uh, confront and kill these uh, these men it sounds like that i mean like with a with an like you said i think that most you know that got to the core of what you were saying about things being very gray that's I, that's tough it's a i mean like I, i'm sure that that opened up a lot of great role-playing opportunities and a lot of really interesting banter between players and things like that that i, I mean like i i'm thinking of situations like uh 12 angry men where like sure. one person is very much you know one person is very is taking a hard stance on this with the rest of the party like on the other side and whew, yeah. i could imagine some pretty intense in a good way some pretty intense in a good way sessions i agree well i've had people obviously in conventions you're stuck in these four to five hour slots mm -hmm. but these are released for home play as well and i've had people uh email me you know, saying, damn you, Henry, <laughs> or curse you, oh, sorry, okay. curse you, Henry, uh, you know, we spent, uh, you know, three hours playing the mod, and then four hours from that last, you know, that last little scene, because we were having these, these in-character discussions, and I think that's great, you know, and they're, they're obviously joking, I mean, they're, they, they love being, being uh, uh, made to think, and, uh, and we like to make people think. Uh, the overall theme of the crusade is victory at what cost, how far are they willing to go to, uh, to, to win, and as a matter of fact, the last hard point that we um, that we just released here is um, uh, at what, what cost victory is the name of, is the name of the uh, the adventure, and, uh, and there really is you know how far will you go to and what will you sacrifice to uh, to win, and I, I think it's analogous to uh, to what's going on in current events with uh, 
the question of torture, how far, you know, will the U.S. do that for the terrorists and whatnot. And it's, it's a way of, you know, I think that, that games are fun to play, mm -hmm. but they should also uh, enlighten and make people think. I, I, I couldn't agree more, and I think it's great that uh, this shows another way that people can kind of express their ideas in a safe way um, and also not only express their ideas but kind of go over in their heads, like, what, what do I really feel about these kind of issues? And so that's really neat to have that. I mean, to have that in injected into a game is pretty special. That's pretty special. Well, we try. One, one thing I would like to make clear, though, not every single adventure is this angst-driven. <laughs> you know, there's fun in there too. There's lots of fun there too. Now, sometimes, yeah, you know, sometimes we, we 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 have comedy uh, comedy adventures where we inject some some full hard uh, full hardness. Uh, like for example, um, we had a running joke with the uh, von Ferdlau brothers. You know, the there's a. Uh, you know uh, the the PCs are, are being told this thing and and they're being told well you take care of, of X and don't worry about Y because I, I've called in the Von, von Ferdlau brothers and they, it's been this running joke but they never meet this Von Ferdlau brothers and then at the huge battle interactive we had last night um, you know the, the the infernal army was was raising the the walls of Joppa and things seem really grim and they look look across and they see the all these hundreds of knights coming in different armors and regalies and whatnot. And one of the NPCs goes, ah, at last, the Von Fredlov brothers have arrived, and there's hundreds of them. <laughs> and it's this, it's, the story is that there's, a, there's this one knight named Von Fredlov who is a, a, a ladies' man and has <laughs> sired children from one point of the continent to the other. And, of course, they, they've all come to, to help uh, their father's best friend and then his hour of need and whatnot. So it's, it was a little running joke, and everybody had a good time. So it's not always, you know, angst and, oh, my gosh, you know, what are we going to do? I mean, there's a lot of fun involved.